Hi, Scott Wonder here from Wonderwoods. Welcome to another Wonderwoods video. I am getting ready to finish up this giant burr oak slab. It's part of an outdoor bar that we're doing. We've got all the work done except for the very last step. It's got four coats of finish on it already. We're using Pro Lux uh, from, it's a PPG product now. It used to be made by Sickens. Um, but it's called Pro Lux. It's an outdoor finish that I like a lot that'll last pretty well outside. It still needs to be recoded after a few years, but it's the longest lasting finish that I know of that'll hold up outside. So I've got several coats of that on. And the last thing I want to do on this tree, on this slab, is to do a little calligraphy on it. This bur oak, it's about, it's wide, 48 inches wide, and it's a single piece. And they've been affectionately calling it Daniel Boone's bur oak because it fell over on a road close to a spot where Daniel Boone was known to travel. And Daniel Boone's homestead, or one of his houses, is not far from here. So, like I said, it's affectionately being called the Daniel Boone's Burr Oak. And the customer who owns this brought it to me. Okay, let's back up. The story actually is a little nuttier than that. When I was up at Jesse's, Jesse is the customer on this log, on this slab. I was up at Jesse's and we were talking about the layout and everything. And he was talking about the Boonesboro Oak. And Kyle had been talking about the Boonesboro Oak. And I had been paying a lot of attention the whole time they were talking about Boonesboro Oak. But finally, Jesse said, have you seen any literature on it? And I said, what literature? Yeah, there's an article about it. So he went in the house and got a printout of this article. And the article starts talking about the tree. And I said, oh my gosh, I know this tree. So for years, Kyle's been telling me about this Boone's Oak, And I didn't know that I even actually milled it before him. So about five years ago, a friend of mine told me about the tree that was on the side of the road and that nobody was doing anything with it and that I could get it if I wanted to. So I went there with my truck and I planned to salvage the logs, but they were giant. So I started on the main log and just quartered it with a chainsaw so that I could get it to fit on my truck because it was way too heavy. I always thought that I'd go back and get the big logs to slab those, but I never did. And I just kind of let them sit, and I figured they just disappeared. Well, it turns out that Kyle, who cuts for me, and is a friend of mine, along with his friend John, went out probably a couple of years later and picked up those logs and then milled them. So this whole time they've been talking about the Boonesboro Oak, it's been the same tree that I worked on. So I thought that was kind of fun. So, like I said, it's affectionately being called the Daniel Boonesboro Oak. And the customer who owns this brought it to me and he's a bit of a history buff and would like some historical dates written on the slab so people can see how old it is. I put a piece of tape on here so I can try to figure out where all the years are at. And I've been right now at least starting out putting marks every 10 years and working my way back. So I'm gonna get some timeline on here so I know approximately when the years are and then being able to stretch those out throughout the slab on this side and probably on that side, wherever I can find a nice little place to write and write some historical dates. Um, I'm not sure what dates those are gonna be and how it's gonna lay out, but I'm gonna do the calligraphy. And then after that, I'm gonna put one more coat of the Pro Lux on top of this to seal it all in and then get it delivered. Since we've had this slab in the shop, there's been some discrepancies on how old it is. Kyle, who cut this slab, was guessing at 250. My customer has been saying 250. And when I first got it, I saw these rings in here pretty big. I can count them pretty well. And I was getting more like 150, which is a big discrepancy. We'd rather it be 100 years older. It's very big. And I was having a hard time figuring out why there was such a difference. I think I figured it out. This is cut through the center meaning down here you can see the 
very center of the tree is right here. This is the center center. It does have two hearts, one right here and one over here, but this is the dead center of the tree. So to make it easy on myself, knowing this was the center cut out of the tree, I went ahead and counted the rings down here where the rings are wider. However, what I figured out is that the tree is not totally flat and straight this way. The center of the tree is here and then it comes up like this. So when it does that, it leaves this part cut right through the center, but this part basically going over the top of the center. So I've got 160 rings to what's the middle of this, but there's actually rings below it to get to the center that I need to count down this way. What I can do and what I need to do is trace this ring, the last ring I got that's basically in the center of the, the slab here, come around here, follow it here, and then count the rest of the rings here to the center. The reason I was avoiding that to begin with is these rings right here are very, very, very tight and gonna be hard to count. These are really easy. I had 10 years in whatever that is, two and a half inches. Over here, I'm gonna have two 10 years and about mm, a half an inch. Here's what I got so far to the middle of this slab. Now I need to trace that line back to here. As you can see right there, one inch in there is like, I don't know, 25 rings maybe. That one's gonna be a tough one to count but it's gonna add a nice amount to our total. So I got the ears mapped out. And the furthest I got in the center here is 1860. If you follow that ring, it comes down here, 1860 over here, 1860 here, 1860 here. But the middle of the tree is actually right here. And between there, that's like, four and a half inches. And that's basically a hundred years of growth right there in that little tiny bit. The rings are so tight, I can barely count them. I had to go back to the end here a few times to try to count them. And that leaves us with a nice fun number here of 1776. Done. This one right here was my favorite one. I thought it looked pretty, and I thought it was pretty cool to battle a little bighorn. It sounds very old, very historical. And then after I got all the words done, the boys went and installed the tops. And this day of installation went pretty fast because while we're trying to make it fit nice and look good, it doesn't have to be super tight because it's not like we can caulk it in or or do anything like that because the wood outside is going to move with humidity changes and temperature changes. So we need to make it look good, but it still need to have some gaps around it uh, so it doesn't bind up. So pretty quick.